Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fan fiction and audio fiction. This is the series Romeo and His Marinette and it is for Marichette Monday and it was part of With Love February but it's now continued. Um, and this is part six so I hope you're enjoying it. Massive love and shout out to Kim for the use of her beautiful stunning art in the thumbnail. All her information is down below. Make sure you send me some love by smashing that like button comment down below what you think of this part and what will happen next and subscribe so you don't miss out on series like these and treats and one shots and I hope you enjoy part 6 Marinette's POV mom on Marinette said through a giggle did you have a good time yes dear I thought you were shouting for us is everything okay? Sabreem looked for Marinette and lingered on a bashful Adrian. No, we were rehearsing. I'm doing the part where Juliet shouts to her nurse. Anon? Oh, I see. Well, we have brought some food back for lunch if you care to join us. And it is lovely to see you again, Adrian. Hello, Miss Dupin Chang, and thank you. Yes, my mum. We'll join you in five minutes. Very good. Sabreem smiled at the pair and lowered the trap door as she made her way back into the kitchen. Marinette burst out laughing as Adrian dropped down the last few steps, covering his face with his hands. <laughs> Are you alright there? Marinette peered over the side of the rail with happy tears streaming down her face. I'm sorry, but the look on your face? What must your parents think? His hands shifted from his face to the back of his neck as he paced on the spot. Marinette, reading Adrian's worried gestures, scrambled down the ladder, stood before him and placed her hands on his shoulders. Adrian, these are my parents. There is nothing to worry about. You need to realise how highly they think of you. But they... Marinette ran one of her hands to his cheek as his eyes finally landed on hers. Trust me, they know how much you have done for me as my friend. You have always been there for me. Adrian leant his forehead against hers. What I have done for you is nothing to what you have provided. He wrapped his arms around her waist and pulled her in tighter. Adrian, you need to stop putting this pressure on yourself and give yourself more credit. And that you are highly thought of? I am in love with you. She allowed the words to settle in watching a smile filter across his lips and felt his shoulders drop. Do you know how much that means to me to hear these words from your lips? I never thought I could be this lucky. To have someone like you to love both sides of me? He breathed out. I think there's still a part of me that can't believe that you, you of all people, are my kitty. I think it was through being your kitty allowed me to see different side of my marinette. You were so much more open with him than with Adrian. That's because I was a stuttering mess with Adrian. I fell in love with you when you gave me your umbrella and then from there, oh, I tried telling you my feels and asking you out. Wait, when you said the past three years, you meant from my second day. The umbrella? You have since then, and I didn't. I wish I had, no wonder. She brushed her hand through the air before landing back on his cheek. But none of that matters now, because we have found each other, and I'm happy, Adrian. You make me happy. She felt his hand reach up and cup her face. He stroked a tear away from her cheek with his thumb before kissing the same spot. Slowly, his lips skipped down to hers. The soft, tender touch made her head swell. It wasn't the passionate kiss as before, but more of a kiss where they were comfortable with each other, like they had done it many times before, with the promise of more to come. I think we should make our way downstairs before my mom comes looking for Reza once again. Are you good? She searched his emerald eyes and found them sparkling back at her. His hand stroked down her arm, causing a shiver to ripple through her body until it reached hers. I'm more than good. I'm more than happy. And I think you're right. We should better. 
He gestured his head to the trap door. Marinette left the hatch and the warm, inviting smell wafted towards them. Knowing he was nervous, she gave his hand a quick squeeze before leading him down the stairs. My mom greeted them at the bottom of the stairs with a warm smile. I hope you like pot roast, Adrian. Mrs. Lee seemed to think everyone has the appetite of a teenager and made more than we could eat. We figured you would both be ready for lunch break when we got home anyway. Sounds delicious, Mrs. Dupin Chang, he replied politely, and while his anxiety didn't show on his face, he squeezed her hand a little tighter. It's Sabim and Tom, dear, she replied, glancing down at the joint hand. A tiny smirk tugged at the corner of a smile that Marinette knew all too well, which meant her mother was dying to say something, but wouldn't. If you forget it again, I'll break your plate. Marinette, would you mind filling the water glasses? No problem, my mum, she replied. She gave Adrian's hand one last squeeze, trying not to laugh as his eyes blew wide. B break my plate? He whispered as she handed him several glasses from the cupboard. Nothing to worry about. It's kind of a family joke. When I was little and getting into things, I shouldn't. My mum and papa would threaten to break my plate if I didn't shape up. She couldn't help but giggle over the time her mother had found her six-year-old self on top of the refrigerator in search of hidden cookies. They never meant it, and she doesn't now. He chuckled weakly as she poured the water into the glasses and helped her carry them to the table. It took some relaxed conversation, Mrs. Lee's excellent pot roast and a few puns from Tom to put his mind at ease. But Adrian finally seemed to enjoy himself. Marinette just watched him fondly as he slowly sank into her family's dynamics like a wary man sinking into a hot tub at the end of a long day. It tugged at her heart that Adrian, her kitty, who was so brave in facing Shadowmoth and everything he could throw at them, was afraid of rejection. It explained why he'd been so nervous about her fake confession. He hadn't wanted to hurt her, knowing how it felt. Oh boy. She thought nervously. That is going to be a mess to explain when the time comes. When. Not if. When. As an awkward as she felt over the idea of him learning her identity and all the problems that came with it. She was sure that she would tell him. But not today. She could give herself time to adjust. Time to soak in the warmth of his love. She could give herself that much. After washing the dishes together, they went back upstairs, followed by her mom's knowing eyes. As she closed the trap door behind them, she felt his arms creep around her waist. Thank you, he murmured into her hair. For what? For wanting me? Loving me? On both sides of the mask. He kissed the side of her neck, sending one shiver. He kissed the side of her neck, sending warm shivers coursing through her. You have no idea what that means to me, Marinette. She turned in his arms and ran her hands to his shoulders before slipping her hands behind his neck. I think I do. I could see it, you know. The loneliness. The rejection. The worry. I just didn't know what to do about it, and I could barely talk to you anyway, so... He chuckled and brushed his nose against hers. Oh, was it possible to fall in love with a sound? Because that soft chuckle was addictive. You're talking to me now, he pointed out, his smile turning smug as he watched her blush. Anything you want to say now that you aren't so nervous? She looked up into his beautiful eyes that smiled down at her with all the life and happiness of the first day of spring. Call me but love, she murmured softly. She watched him focus on her lips before his arms tightened around her and kissed her. Soft and sweet, but she could feel the passion he held in check. His chest vibrated in a purr that was softer than when he was transformed, but it thrilled her in a way she didn't want to identify. My love, he sighed against her lips. We should get back to rehearsal, shouldn't we? I was thinking, since we've had more rehearsing than I thought, he wriggled his eyebrows at her and she swatted at his arm playfully, making him laugh. 
I thought we might curl up and watch a movie. We can use the break. He hummed in delight, adding a different layer to the purring. As long as we watch something where the prince gets to keep his princess once he finds her. He rubbed his jaw against her hand in a cat-like gesture. I'm not in the mood for tragedy when I'm this happy. So they made a pile of pillows and blankets on the floor and watched the Black Shield of Falworth. Adrian was thrilled with the sword fighting scenes, poking at the screen with happy jabbing motions, and Marinette curled close to him when Miles and Francis climbed the wall to visit the Lady Anne and Miles' sister, Meg. But when Walter Blunt kept fighting Miles and pressuring Anne to marry him, Marinette buried her face into his shoulder. What's wrong, Marinette? he asked, worry darkening his eyes as he paused the movie. Are you okay? Adrian, I'm so glad you're my Romeo, but... But what, love? I don't know how I'm going to get through performing this in front of the class, she groaned. Are you still worried? We can rehearse some more if it helps to feel more confident, he said, rubbing her shoulders smoothly. It's not that, especially now that I don't have to worry about, well... She blushed and looked down. He lifted her chin with his fingers and placed a soft kiss on her lips. You don't have to worry about the kiss being real, you know. But that's just it, Adrian. Whether or not it's real for us, everyone in class will see it. Alia teasing me would be bad enough, but Chloe and Lila? I just don't want to think about what they are going to do. You don't have to worry so much, Marinette. They are... Nothing but foul words. Foul words but are foul winds, and foul winds is but foul breath, and foul breath is nonsense. She giggled. That's not Romeo and Juliet. He grinned. Still Shakespeare, though. The point is, words can hurt, yes, but that's all they have. Just words and nothing. Chloe or Lila or anyone else can change how I feel about you, princess. He kissed her temple. Besides, Lila's been lying, saying I've been dating her for years. I think it's past time to show her what it takes to steal my heart. But she had settled back against his shoulder and tried to let his words calm her. But the next day... All the confidence and assurance she had gained from Adrian's confessing his love for her shattered when she was pushed against the wall of the girl's room during the break between her two classes. What do you think you're doing over my Adrian's this morning, married trash? Chloe demanded, leaning into her face and smiling a serpent's grin. Marinette gasped at the blow, feeling anger swell in her chest. What's it to you, Chloe? What it is, Du Pang Chang, is that you are so far beneath Adrian that you aren't even good enough to lick his shoes. That's not true, she growled, fighting to restrain herself. Adrian cares about me, Chloe. There's nothing you can do to change that. Besides, Miss Bustier was the one who paired us for the Shakespeare assignment. If you have a problem, take it up with her. Ridiculous. Utterly ridiculous, she exclaimed. You know, maybe this will teach you a lesson after all. She examined her nails critically, as if wondering if touching her had damaged her polished finish. You have no idea what you have stepped into, Dupang Chang. The world Adrikans and I were born into. Well, you can never hope to measure up. Adrian is famous, rich and handsome. What would he ever see in a pitiful little nothing like you? Tears were falling down Marinette's face now. She stood her ground. There are only words, she thought, desperately trying to deny the fear that Chloe was right. They can't hurt me. They're only words. Two houses that shall never be joined, said the soft, hateful voice that could only belong to Lila. She stood by the door, blocking the way so no one could enter the bathroom. If you keep playing this game with Adrian, then it can only lead to heartbreak and tragedy, just like the play. 
How selfish can you get, Mary Trash? Chloe sneered. Do you really think Gable Agress would think a lowly baker girl worthy of his perfect son? Why, you're not even worthy to breathe the same air as people like us. That's not true, she repeated, fists cleansed and eyes streaming. He, he loves me, he said. Give it up, Marinette, Lila said, practically purring. Adrian is just feeling sorry for you. After all, what do you really have to offer someone like him? Hmm? We've all known about your little crush on him for years, but he's so kind. He's just humoring you to get through the assignment. There is nothing special about you to hold his attention, so just give up, Marinette. I... No, I... She sobbed. Then Chloe and Lila pushed her into the cubicle and braced the door with something so she couldn't get out. They laughed cruelly as they left the bathroom, leaving her trapped with her misery. She sat there on the floor, crying until her eyes burned, her throat was sore and her chest ached from sobbing. Marinette! Tiki finally called softly. She hadn't even felt her little Kwame trying to soothe her all this time. You need to pull yourself together. You might attract a kuma. But the right Tiki, she wailed. What do I have to offer Adrian that he doesn't already have or can have better with someone else? I'm nothing. They're just jealous of you, Marinette. They always have been. Chloe because your drive, talent and ambition and Lila because everyone seems to like you and want to be your friend just because you're you. And Adrian loves you for the same reason. Don't forget, Adrian is Cat Noir. He let go of Ladybug and fell in love with your civilian self. That's just how special you really are. But Marinette was too raw, too heartsick to listen to her friend. Suddenly the toilet cubicle felt too small, as if she couldn't breathe. She pounded on the door, but it wouldn't open. I, I, I need to get out! Get out! She gasped out. Tiki flew through the door. A second later, there was a loud clatter and she phased back through. They had blocked it with a chair. It will. But before she could finish, Marinette was out of the bathroom and running for the doors as if her life was depending on it. She ran through the crowd of students in the courtyard, brushing past them with little regard for anything except intense desire to get home. She blew down the stairs, only barely taking in that Adrian was standing in front of the silver car his father always sent for him. Marinette! What happened? What's wrong? He reached out a hand to her, but she kept running. Marinette! She could hear his feet pounding behind her, but she couldn't face him, not with those hateful words strangling her heart like a noose. She burst through the doors of the bakery, ignoring her parents' startled look, and ran up the stairs to her apartment. Marinette? Sweetheart, what is it? Her mum asked, having followed her up the stairs. She could hear Adrian talking loudly with her father below, demanding to see his princess. She closed the door and leaned against it, trembling, sick at heart. Marinette, open up! I know something happened at school. Please, let me in. Let me help. No, Adrian, she cried in anguish. Just go. We've been foolish, lying to ourselves. There is no lie, Marinette. You hold my whole heart, so you know there can't be any room for lies. I, I, I can't do this. She pushed her face and her hand hard against the door, willing him to leave, begging him to stay. I, I can't b perform with you and... Oh, how it hurt her heart. I, I can't do this. Us, the divide is... It's just too great. Princess, please, she heard from behind the door. Please, just go. There was a long silence and Marinette, exhausted, burdened and heartbroken, turned her back to the door and her kitty, her Romeo, on the other side. She slid down the wood to the floor. Oh, my poor dear, her mother whispered, kneeling on the floor, wrapping her loving arms around her. 
Thank you for listening to part six of Romeo and his Marinette. Make sure you keep an eye out for part seven, which should be coming very, very soon. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you smash that like button. I know, I couldn't give them complete and utter bliss. And there had to be a little bit of angst in there. Um, make sure you comment down below what you think will happen next in part seven. And make sure you subscribe so that you do not miss out on series like this or other series or one shots to come and I hope you are good and I will speak to you soon. Bye!